Welcome to Code Corner. My name is Ryan Mayfield, and this is a video series where we go through different code topics that relate to PV and energy storage installations. Today, we're going to talk about the 2020 National Electrical Code and specifically get into uh, connections on the when we're interconnecting with utilities. So 705.12, and specifically, we're going to be looking at B31 and B32. These are connections when, when we're making those connections to our bus bars. These are pretty common types of installations. And so it's probably something that you have seen run across on a fair fairly regular basis, but just want to go through those topics and make sure everything's clear on what the requirements are. So let's first look at the language in B31 and B32. And the B31 is one that's probably not actually used all that often. It's kind of a hard one to actually you know, have a system that meets this requirement, but there's an allowance for it. So we'll go through it. B32, this is the one that is, you know, I would say lovingly referred to in the industry as the 120% rule. Uh, it's, you know, 120%. We'll get into kind of what those, what that means, but this is a very, very typical way that systems are interconnected, especially on residential systems uh, because of the way that everything works out. So let's look at B31 first. So B31 is saying that we can take the sum of 125% of the power source output circuit current. And so I'm going to pause there for a second. So our 705 in general is not only for PV systems. It's for interconnected power systems. It can cover a, a variety of different uh, types of systems. So the power source output circuit current is a generic term for us, and more often than not, when we're talking about it, it's, you know, it's the output of our PV inverter or the inverters, the, the sum of those. So we're going to take 125% of that total value. So we're going to take, if your inverter puts out 32 amps, you're going to take 32 amps times 1.25, happens to be 40 amps exactly. And we'll see an example of why that's a common size. But that's the, that's the calculation that they're doing here. And it happens in both one and two here. So just kind of wanted to make sure that that was clear. But one says, if you do that calculation, that value plus the overcurrent protection device from this, from the utility, if those two added together don't exceed the ampacity of the bus bar, you can put your interconnection point anywhere on the bus. It doesn't matter. And it's because the, the sum of the two, they don't exceed the bus bar rating there's nowhere along the, the bus bar that can be see more current than what it's rated for. So have at it, you can put it really wherever you want. Again, it's kind of a rare situation to find, but there it does happen, it's out there. Number two, B32 is really the one that we see applied almost universally. And so what this is saying is if you have a uh, power source, or if you have a panel board that has two power sources, a primary power source, the utility, and a PV system, we'll just say in this case, it can be, again, this is a generic, the the 705.12 is more generic, but we're going to talk about PV systems. If you take that 125% of the output current, so again, I'm going to stick with the 32 amp times 1.25 is 40. If that 40 amps plus the protection, the overcurrent protection for that bus bar, if the sum of those don't exceed 120% of the bus bar, you can make that connection, but you just have to put the new solar connection at the opposite end of where the utility connection is coming in. So you would have in a top feed panel, you'd have 200 amps coming in from the top for the utility. You'd have to take that 40 amp uh, source for the PV system and put it at the bottom. And so we have some pictures here and kind of helps illustrate that. And then the last bit I wanted to just point out is if you do utilize this B32, you have to have a warning label saying, don't relocate this breaker so that somebody doesn't come in behind you and put it at the top because of they wanted the space at the bottom for some reason. So let's look at those examples. So B31 again is it happens, but it's not the most common. So in this case, we're showing a utility, um, a larger scale, a three-phase system where the inverter is 160 amps continuous output current. 
you multiply the 160 amps by 1.25, that's gonna give you 200 amps exactly. So that would go on to a 200 amp breaker. And what B31 is saying is if you have that 200 amps from the inverter, so it's, it's actually the 160 times 1.25, that's how we're, how we're getting the 200 in this case, add that to the main breaker for this panel, we have an 800 amp main service disconnect. If that main service panel is a thousand amps, 800 plus 200 does not exceed the bus bar rating. Then that 200 amp breaker for that PV system can go at the top. It could go in the middle, it could go in the very bottom. It doesn't really matter for this code section because again, the 200 amps from the PV plus the 800 amps from the utility does not exceed the bus bar rating. So there's nowhere along that bus that can be see too much current flowing on it um, because of the loads that are uh, pulling the current. The more common type of scenario, and, and we're showing a residential uh, example here, this would be where you have that inverter, that interactive inverter, 32 amps of continuous output current, 32 amps times 1.25 is exactly 40. And so the 40 amps and if in this case, we don't have it labeled, but we would have, typically you would have a 200 amp main breaker in this panel. So the 200 amps main breaker on a bus bar that's rated for 200 amps, you don't have any extra current, if you will. So that breaker for the PV system can't go at the top. It can't go in the middle. It has to go at the opposite end of the bus bar per this B32. And so the idea here is, if the, all the loads are running and the solar is producing the maximum amount of current it can, the amount of the current coming in from the utility will be coming down from the, in this case on the top, flowing down into the loads. The solar will come be coming in and flowing up from the bottom to the top and nowhere along that bus bar will they be additive and will they exceed the bus bar rating. So this is a way of interconnecting our PV systems that allows us to have sources of power, utility, and PV in this case. Technically, it exceeds the bus bar rating, but because of the way that we're interconnecting this, we are doing it in a safe manner that allows us to, to do that and not run the risk of overheating the bus bars. So those are the, the first two in 705.12, very, very common application and something that people see all the time. And so hopefully this is helpful and maybe clarified any, any points for you. So thanks for tuning in to our Code Corner on 705.12. We do have a second part of this that I encourage you to check out. And if you'd like to learn more about this topic or others, we do have education workshops that we provide both in person and online. And our team also does system design and engineering, as well as providing consulting services for solar and solar plus storage EPCs and manufacturers. So give us a call or visit us at mayfield.energy if you'd like to learn more.